Good morning. Wow, how outstanding is this sunshine? I'm sorry if it's right in your eyes, but we have to celebrate it. It's been great for a long time. Um, I'm a little bit sad, Ashley. If I had planned this better, we could have done goat yoga because it would have worked with my theme a little bit in lieu of that. The, thun the thunder yoga is, is on spot. So I'm here to talk to you today about investing, uh, which I think is a slightly odd topic for me. Uh, I don't have, I don't think any money actively in the stock market, and um, I work for a nonprofit. So that tells you probably everything you need to know about my capacity to invest. Um, but I'm going to take a little bit of a spin on this. So when I say the word invest, what do you think of? That's kind of a rhetorical question. I think of the great stock market crash or the great recession of 2008, where, again, because I have nothing in the stock market, it didn't really bother me. Um, so, you know, you win some, you lose some. Or I think of piles and piles of money. Uh, and if you know me or you know what I do in my day-to-day -day life, you probably think that what I'm going to make this talk about today is this. And of course, I want you to support local art. I want you to invest in local art for yourself, for the betterment of the community, for the strengthening of the art sector as a whole, but I'm also not here to talk about that today. I'm here to talk about something entirely different. I wanna know how often do you think about investing in your dreams? So we spend, I think, a fair amount of time thinking about literal investments. We invest in our time, we invest in our um, 401ks, if you have them, we invest in our food journals, we invest in our gym memberships, in our children's activities, all those kinds of things. But how often do you make real investments in your dreams? So I'm going to talk to you about my next dream. And I'm going to start by telling you how I think most of us do it. So my dream, actually, is to be a public speaker and professional writer. For years and years and years and years and years, I wanted to be a professional actor. I've sort of set that down, mostly because of Lady Boss. So. In June, I was invited by Laura and Danielle. Look at you beaming back there. That's so delightful. <laughs> Laura and Danielle, who uh, run Lady Boss, asked me if I would come and talk at their summit about uh, living your mission passion, which I could do upside down in the middle of the night uh, while a tsunami was happening around me because I've been at the Arts Partnership for so long. And I told them I could do that, but I wasn't very interested in that. What I was really interested in was this idea of how do you pursue passion? So I put a talk together, and I have to tell you, it was the single greatest 20 minutes of my professional life. I won't uh, say it was better than like the birth of my son or my wedding or those kinds of things, but it was a great 20 minutes because it did some things for me that I had never done. I mostly talk about art. I got to talk about me. I got to talk about what I wanted and where I want to go and how I got where I got. And it was transformational for me and it changed my path. So my dream is to be a professional speaker, professional writer, public speaker, professional writer. So how do most of us go about doing, pursuing our dreams? we come up with the challenges. So we have imposter syndrome. Who am I? I'm just this person in the middle of the country. I don't have any criteria to speak anywhere. Um, I'm really busy. I have a very active full-time job. Uh, I'm kind of old and it's just so much hard work. So that's the challenges to our dreams. But I want it so much. So I guess I'll just write more, speak more, present more, post more, see what happens. Here's how I'll get my dream. I'll be discovered online, get a big break somehow, probably by magic. Because that's kind of how it seems to happen for most people. So I'm just going to wait for magic. Meanwhile, the clock's going to keep ticking, and I'm going to wonder why I'm still living in Fargo, North Dakota, running the Arts Partnership, not the Brene Brown of Fargo. Um, but what if you chose to be strategic? about your dreams. Instead of counting on magic or luck 
or just um, happenstance? What if you actually made strategic investments in your dreams? So now we're going to go way back to the last century when I was a college student when I was getting a theater degree. You can imagine my mother was not thrilled that I was getting a theater degree. I doubt if my dad was either. Um, nobody sends their child off to get a theater degree thinking, oh, there's going to be incredible job opportunities at the end of this investment. But here's what has been so incredible about the 30 years or so since I got this degree. I have discovered and mined and gleaned incredible learning from that that far transcends anything I ever did on a stage playing a character. So this, uh, what we're going to talk about now is, is a direct result of my theater degree. Something called a goat sheet, developed by a man named Robert Cohen. It's kind of an acting philosophy. And the purpose behind this goat sheet is that it helps you be specific, compelling, persuasive, active. It helps you know what you really want, and it helps you raise the stakes. So let me give you a um, real example of what I'm talking about. How many of you can remember a conversation with your parents about um, staying out past curfew? All right, so you're 17 years old. You have an 11 o'clock curfew, but your good friend is throwing an all-night party. If you go to your parents and you say, hey, can I go to so-and-so's all-night party? What are they going to say? No. Of course they're going to say no. Because you know the rules of your 11 o'clock curfew. But if you are specific, compelling, persuasive, active, know what you really want and raise the stakes, you never ask them if you can go to the party knowing they'll say no. You start by saying this. Um, so I've kept my grades up all semester. I haven't been late home one time this year. I'm going to school full time. I get myself up in the morning. I go to my job. I play my sports. I practice my instrument. I, whatever it is you do that puts you in a positive light, you lay all of that out for them so that what they're thinking is, wow, I raised an amazing child. And then you say, so do you think one time I could go to my friend's all night party since I've proven how responsible I am? Now your parents have to say yes or look like a jerk for saying no. You have raised the stakes and you have won. At the end of the day, that's really all acting is about. When I come on stage, I want to win my scene, my character. I, I want to win, whatever winning means. So what is GOAT? Obviously, it's not a four-legged animal. It's an acronym. And we're going to go back to my dream, and we're going to specifically lay it out. And I'm not going to read you all this. I've broken all the PowerPoint rules. And I know just saying I've made a PowerPoint already makes me highly middle-aged. So sorry about that. Uh, we're not reading these. Uh, my goal is to make extraordinary, extraordinary something extraordinary. Thank you, Jeff Knight, for the logo. So my goal is to create content on extraordinaryextraordinary.com to launch a sex successful, as in big and audacious, sustainable, as in I still want to leave the country at least three times a year, writing and speaking career. And I want to do that through kind of three things, finding and pursuing passion where you are, navigating the reality of practically perfect and ho-hum, which is where I think we all live, and watching addiction up close and personal and our joint journey to sobriety. What are my obstacles? OK, there are a lot of obstacles to actually doing this. Because guess what? Technically, I'm doing it right now. I'm public speaking. I've written some stuff. If you've been following the blog this month, uh, you and thousands of other people, I'm doing what I said I want to do. I'm living my dream. Okay, I have not made one cent off it, so I'm not uh, sending me to Europe, I can promise you that. And it has not yet gotten me to a point where, Karen, this is where I promise this is not a public resignation, where I can leave my current job and look at what is next. So I have to figure out how do I define success? What is that? Because for some people, what I'm doing is success. Uh, it's not success for me. It's a great starting point, and I'm thrilled to be here. 
but you better believe I want a lot more. Um, what missing gaps do I fill? Guess what? If you go to YouTube and type in middle-aged women public speakers, I mean, I've never done that, but I imagine if you do, you're going to find a lot of women who look like me, white, educated, middle-class, middle America women who all think, oh, we have something great to say. Uh, maybe I do, maybe I don't. There's so much content in the world. How can I possibly break through? I'm old just to be getting started. If you're thinking to yourself, you're not that old, thank you. I'm old to be getting started on something brand new. And I don't really look the part. And what do I mean by that? I mean, I don't live in a hip part of the country. I don't have a particularly super quirky life. I don't raise chickens. My child didn't wear hemp made clothing as a baby. And I don't look amazing in overalls. And I kind of feel like those are the criteria that make people go, wow, I got to pay attention to this woman. I'm none of those things. Am I even qualified? Again, imposter syndrome is a constant, uh, steady friend, I think, for most of us. Am I willing to do the work and make the investments? Um, why should anyone listen to me? And then again, who am I? Back to this imposter syndrome. Now I got to think about tactics. So this is my encouragement to you to not say, oh, I want to grow a blog. I have a blog. It's growing all the time. But what is growth? You have to think about being specific with your goals. So I did that. January 1st, I sat down and I wrote out numbers, which is not anything I ever do about any aspect of my life. And I specifically said, here's how I want to grow my blog, my Twitter page, my Facebook page, the kinds of things that are measurable. Um, I need to ensure that my website is optimally set up. So I did these things. I added a video page, a homepage, a contact page. I need to create and follow content calendars. Those of you who work in the regular world, content calendars are not that groundbreaking. But again, I run a nonprofit. We're kind of all over the place. A content calendar requires time, and that's the one thing we seem to never have. But for the current content that's on my blog, my husband and I created a content calendar. And what do you know? It works. It's actually simplified my life. So I can no longer be the person who says, oh, I can't be bothered with content calendars. Now I have to do them because it's working. Um, I got to set specific dollar amounts. I've got to hire a business coach and decide who that is. I have to complete the Alt MBA course. This is just a side plug. I did the Alt MBA course in January. Uh, it's by Seth Godin. It's an online course. If you're at all curious about it, I would be happy to talk to you about it. It's kind of expensive and it's an insane amount of work but it changed my life. So I really encourage you to look into it, think about it, and reach out to me if you want to talk about it. A lot of what I um, am working on now came about because of that. Um, read new books. Take the time necessary. And most importantly, and this is an acting thing, but this is a human thing. I need to intentionally breathe, and so do you. We don't very often do it. We're all breathing all the time. It's like saying, oh, intentionally blink. Yeah, we're all blinking. But if you're not intentionally breathing, you're not really figuring out what your dream is and how you're going to take the first step to get there. Not the 400th step, the first step. It takes a breath and a step. Um, so then my expectations. And I think this is a really powerful um, pr assignment for you. What do you expect from your life? Do you expect to just get old, die, and have lived it? Great, you're doing that. Well done. But if you expect something even moderately more interesting than what you're doing right now, and I'm not implying you're not doing interesting things, but if you expect something even moderately more interesting, you have to plan for it. You have to think about it, and you have to at least dream about it. Even if you don't plan for it, you have to dream about it. So my expectations are first that I will have a positive effect on others, that I'll be helpful to others who are on the journey of pursuing passion or dealing with the effects of addiction. And a very, very close second, and I'm not ashamed to admit this, is that it feeds me too. That's what I learned at the Lady Boss Summit. I deserve to be fed too. And my current job feeds me in really fabulous ways, but it doesn't feed the super inside absolute core of what makes Dana DelVal, Dana DelVal. So figure out what that is and how you can also wake it up 
um, nourish it, feed it, and give it life. I want to abundantly provide for myself and my family. And when I mean abundantly, I don't mean, oh, God, if I could make $20,000, that'd be awesome. No, abundantly. So figure out what that looks like. I want to continue to make important self-discoveries. So one of the things that I think middle-aged women do a lot is they go, oh, I'm old. And I've said it to you, I think, three times in this talk. I am old for as old as I've ever been, but I fully expect to live another this many years, which means I have a ton of years to still learn and grow and change and evolve and dream and pursue and achieve. And so do you. Um, and that this work will allow me to carve out more time for the things that I love. And again, I'm going to white middle class myself here. Family, travel, cooking, reading, bike rides. It's like the least interesting list of activities on the planet. I'm sure I have others. I just couldn't think of any in the moment. I'm going to work to have others when I have more time. Um, and then all these other things. I want my stuff to be seen and read and heard and listened to. And I want people to pay for it. Not you, you get it for free today. But I want people to pay for it because I think I'm worth it. Um, I want to continue to live in gratitude. Blogging and this journey has put me in a place of recognizing that until, again, the transformational Lady Boss Summit, I was really living in a place of, I got to push this nonprofit rock up the hill again today. Not only does that not really inspire donors, but it really uninspired me. And it wasn't until I remembered my own joy and my own sense of gratitude for where I am that I kind of turned things around. And here's what's really amazing. My personal turnaround has also turned around the arts partnership. So it's an all collective thing. I'm not saying you have to leave your job. I'm saying you have to figure out how to take care of you first because you will make your job better. Um, and then I will joyfully interact with others. That's an incredible thing, to joyfully interact with others, even when the content is hard. This month's content on my blog has been damn hard. If you have someone in your life who struggles with an addiction, you know how hard it's been. And if you've come through it with them, I applaud you and I applaud me because I did it and you're doing it. You can do it. You will do it. You have done it. That's a hard place to be. And I applaud us for getting through it. And I am joyfully interacting with you because it's my privilege and my honor to get to do that. So this was the previous way that I was going to pursue becoming a public speaker and a, a professional writer. More talks. Oh, it's so hard. I guess I'll write more. Magic. That's not going to take me probably anywhere. The goat sheet is going to take me somewhere because it already is. So my question to you is what dream path do you want to take? Where do you want to invest? Now I made you a worksheet because I'm a former teacher and it felt like the right thing to do. So let's hand out the worksheets. And I'm, you're not going to finish this now. You can take it home with you. It's a make and take. Um, but uh, I really encourage you to fill this out. And I absolutely encourage you not to feel like your dream has to be huge. You can have a very small dream that is transformational to you. So don't get caught up if you're not thinking to yourself, well, I need to be Meryl Streep or I want to be the next Michael Jordan, probably none of us are going to be Meryl Streep or Michael Jordan. But what's the dream that you can pursue? So you can fill it out now. I did realize that no one carries pens with them anymore, so you probably can fill it out now. So maybe we'll just um, fast forward like you did fill it out and take it with you and um, think about it. Give it some time. I think you will be amazed what happens when you really honestly lay this out for yourself. Um, so my goal, my challenge to you today is to name your goals, lay out your obstacles, determine how you'll overcome them with tactics, and set your expectations for success. I really believe it's the way a good actor is successful on stage. It's a way a good human is successful in life. I'm doing it, and I think that you can too. 
And I so appreciate you being here this morning. Thanks.